Welcome everyone, this is Zonta with Repo Products. Today's video is on the new People Flow Toolkit that comes with Autodesk Revit 2021.1.2 update. Uh, here I am in the software, and if you head over to the Analyze tab of the ribbon, over here you'll see a panel called People Flow Toolkit. If you don't see this panel, you'll need to use your Autodesk Desktop App program to get the update. You'll head over to Start, Autodesk, and scroll down and look for Autodesk Desktop App. This will be typically running in the background uh, whenever you start up your computer, and it looks at all of your software that you have, and it tells you what updates you might have. So if you click the arrow that says My Updates, it will list any updates in here, okay? And so for the uh, Revit, People Flow Toolkit, it would say Revit 2021.1.2 People Flow Toolkit. You'll click Update and Download and Install it. Uh, make sure you are not in Revit when you do that. Make sure you don't have any Autodesk software when you're doing updates uh, running. Once the update is finished and you install it, you'll have it. So again, I'm here in the Analyze tab of the ribbon. People Flow Toolkit. I'm in a floor plan view, and there are some multiple features that you have here. This panel and the tools that are in here are response to obviously uh, to COVID and the rules and regulations about distancing. So prior to this, if you were not aware, they also introduced route analysis where you have a single path of travel. You can have a command to review any obstacles that you've set in place. You can click this little arrowhead here to get to route analysis settings and it will tell the software these are the objects that are considered not as obstacles okay so if for some reason you know you have to specify furniture as being an obstacle you would put a check mark here and the system will know to go around the furniture um, for this video we're going to look at the people flow toolkit multiple paths is basically the same thing as path of travel but the difference is it finds more than one solution of you you where you stand versus where you want to get out of the building so if I click multiple paths, it will ask for the minimum path separation of six feet. You'll, and you can specify whatever value you want. Click OK. And then it's going to ask you in the command line, in the lower left corner of your screen, pick multiple paths to um, start point. So in other words, where are you standing as a starting point? So I'm going to stand roughly here just for the sake of picking something random. Then it says, pick multiple path endpoint. So you're going to say, well, where do you want to end? So if I click, say, out here to this door, it will figure out what the paths are. And here it shows three paths created with a minimum path separation of six feet. And if you hit close, you have your end result. Hit modify and you're out of the command. Okay. And so here it tells you the actual three different paths you can take to get to that point. Um, now, if you use, say, for example, the annotate tab of the ribbon and you say tag by category and you touch the line work, it'll tell you you don't have the path of travel lines tag loaded. You'll need to load it. So if I click yes, I head over to the uh, annotations tab and look for path of travel. This should be alphabetical. And there it is, path of travel. So once I load it in and I touch the line work, it will give me that data. Uh, obviously, the tag that you place can be horizontal or vertical with a leader, without a leader. It can have an attached end or a free end. Okay. Um, so back to the Analyze tab of the ribbon, that's multiple path of travel. These blue arrows that you see here are considered one-way indicators, and that basically tells the software when you use the path of travel function, don't go the opposite. Don't go the direction you're not allowed to go, and it knows to do that. Here's another example. Um, <clears throat> if this is my point of exit and I stand here, we typically would say run this way through the door and go here. If I purposely put in a one-way indicator and put it at the door here, and I say stand here and try to get out here, it's going to force it to go this way and figure out another way. So I'm going to guess it's going to run this way and around to get out to that point of exit. So I'm going to click um, instead of multiple path, I'll just do a single path this time. So I'll click path of travel. I'll pick here where I want to stand and I want to pick here what I want to get out to. And because it 
negates this uh, blue arrow, it doesn't let us go this way. It figured out a path going internally this way out. If I were to delete it and decide to use multiple path of travel, so let's just go ahead and delete the rest of these for now because we don't need to see them. I'm going to pick multiple path of travel in same situation, six feet, stand here, say go out to here, and it will figure out, in this case, only one possible solution. So it puts it in, see? Um, so I'm going to delete that for now. You also have people content and you have spatial grid. Now, uh, in this particular file, I already have some of the rooms that have spatial grid set up. I'm going to do it for the big gathering space. So if I click spatial grid command, you can specify what kind of grid pattern you want. You can do square or hexagon and what the spacing is going to be. That spacing is going to be center point to center point. So the center of the human body to the center point of the human body. So you have to take into account that that's not actually true six feet, six feet clear. Okay, just be aware of that. You may have to adjust this number to something that is a bit more uh, appropriate for you or what you think is a safe bet. Uh, because as you, as you know, you know, people vary. And so in this situation here, when you use this command and you click OK, it's looking for a room. And so you have to put your mouse over and touch a room. Once you select the room, if you need to pick more than one room, hold the control key down and pick another room. If you want to remove the room, hold the shift key down and then pick another room and it removes it from your selection set. When you finish picking all the rooms uh, in the options toolbar, you'll want to click finish up here. So I'm going to click finish and it builds the grid. Now with the grid in place, you can still tab into the line work of the grid and you can physically move it left, right, up or down and try to look at, set it up so that you can kind of maximize the uh, spacing so that it's actually, you know, giving you six foot. So for example, here, if I assume upper left quadrant of the room is a clean six by six and run this way and down, I'll have this much leftover space down here and down here. So I can really kind of get a lot of people in there. So since I want to put people in there, I can click people content. And it basically allows you to, in the type selector, you'll see that you have uh, that one physical distance, eight, six foot person and physical distance, eight, eight foot person here. Since we did the grid of six feet, I'm going to hold the six foot distance person. And then I come back over here and I can go ahead and place it. Now, when you place the person, it doesn't actually auto snap to the center of the grid, which would be kind of neat, uh, but it doesn't do that. You can use the space bar to flip, to rotate that uh, family. And you'll just kind of have to manually place it as tight as you can um, and it's equally uh, centered inside the space as you can but this is just a neat tool for you to be able to place uh, people randomly just one not necessarily just for presentation purposes but also when you actually run the uh, path of travel command it will avoid all of these people and it'll avoid with that six foot boundary so let's say for example I come in here and I put in a whole bunch of people kind of where I want them to be. And maybe I'll put one over here. And then I'll hit escape twice to get out of the command or hit modify. And I decide I want to run this multiple path of travel or single path of travel. And I'll say I want to stand here and I want to get out to here. It's going to probably go straight through like this and this. It may have slight interference with these uh, figures and it might move about a little bit. So if I were to, let's say, say for the sake of safety, I'll tab, select that, type in CS to create similar, and then I'll just place another one right here purposely to kind of make a barrier, if you will. Now if I say let's do multiple path or single path of travel with whatever distance I want, again I'm going to say stand here and that. this time I'm going to say go out to here. And what it does is it builds all the path of travel to get to that end condition. So here, I'm starting here as a run this way. It has to go around this person. So it go around this person, it gets to the end. Same thing here, it kind of slightly misses this person, runs through, slightly misses this person, bends and goes this way. So it is reacting to the object 
and making the path adjustments to get. And then this one, surprisingly, is a little weird because it says you can go out of the building to get around to that side, which is true technically, but from an emergency standpoint, if we want to get out quickly, we're going to go to the fastest nearest exit, which is typically this one and not necessarily this one or vice versa. It just depends on the distance calculation. Um, and so again, if we want to, we can, um, we can tag um, all of them so we can see what the total distance is and the time it takes to get to those, um, to get to the end. Uh, and that is based upon a walking speed of three miles an hour. Okay. Um, now, uh, also, if you make design adjustments, let's say, for example, um, I tap select this, I see type in CS to create similar, and I'll put another figure right here, right across the line work. I can then select the line work, and I can say update here, and it will automatically update and try to figure out another path to get out and around. Um, if you want to, I'm going to control Z. I'm Instead, I can select it and I can click add a waypoint and pick the waypoint and then it's going to automatically readjust based upon that waypoint and try to get to the end too. So you can manipulate this if you have to. Also, if you tab into the waypoint, whoops, sorry, not the room, let's uh, select the path of travel and we can actually click and drag the position of the waypoint and it will auto adjust again the path to get out. So the uh, People Flow Toolkit that's in the Analyze tab of the ribbon is a very interesting set of tools to help you with designing your space based upon six-foot rule condition and COVID and, and uh, having obstacles in your way and making the path of travel move the way you want it to move. Hopefully this is a, a video you can use and, and, and find useful. But uh, thank you very much for watching.